Hello students, welcome to another lecture that is on the chapter EV auxiliaries that is electric vehicle auxiliaries. Until now we have seen about the auxiliary systems which are required in the electric vehicle such as the battery charging charging system. Also we have seen about the indications of the different battery parameters and the management of those parameters as well. We also saw about the temperature control units which are required in our electric vehicle to provide the comfort to the drivers and the passenger for the air conditioning system in the vehicle. Right. Now the things which are left to be seen for the auxiliaries of the vehicle in that first thing is the power steering units of the vehicle. Now in the case of the power steering units there are mainly two basic types of the power steering. Also in the IC engine there is also a third type which was a hydraulic power steering which we saw on the subject of BAS. In the case of the hydraulic power steering the electric pump or we can say the pump that is used for the supply of the hydraulic fluid that is working from the power of the engine. Now here we are not using the engine so that the pump that we are going to use will work on the electric supply and that electric supply will be directly supplied from the battery right for that an auxiliary battery will be provided right so that in the case of the electro hydraulic power steering what happens is that the pump is still be used but operate that pump the supply is given from the battery in context of the electricity right so that the hydraulic system works in this case the vehicle when going at the normal or the straight position the pump does not work the pump will work when we are turning the vehicle that turning effort will be given with the help of sensor to our controller that controller will supply the flow to, from the battery and then pump will operate and in that time the high pressure fluid will flow to our steering gear and so that our steering will become easier when we are turning the vehicle. So this is simply how the electro hydraulic power steering works which is same as the power steering that we use in our IC engine vehicles. Also there is an, another example of the power steering that is electric power steering. This type of power steering also we use in the IC engine vehicle as well. So the types of the power steering that we are going to use in the electric vehicle will be similar to the power steering that we use in the IC engine. Now the only difference with this type of electric power steering is that the pump is being removed from the system. In place of the pump we are using the motor to give the uh, required amount of the torque multiplication. So it works based on the torque sensor which is provided in the steering sensor. When our turning effort is applied, so from the turning wheel one torque will generated according to our turning effort. That torque will be sensed by the help of torque sensor and from that amount of the torque the controller will give the signal to the motor and that motor will rotate by getting the power from our auxiliary battery. That motor will further be connected with our reduction gear which provides the speed reduction and torque multiplication which is required for the easier turning of the vehicle and this is simply how our electric power steering works with the help of torque sensor and the motor right it is very accurate and most of the electric vehicle now uses this type of power steering rather than using the hydraulic system which removes the hydraulic fluid from the system and the system becomes electric and there are mul multiple sensors there in the electric vehicle so one more sensor will not be any problem for the case of the EVs. Next is the auxiliary power supplies so which are the components which require the auxiliary power and that power will be supplied with the help of auxiliary battery. Right? We will have a separate battery to run this auxiliary system and that auxiliary battery will be charged from our main battery. 
the auxiliary battery will be kept such as that if the uh, main battery discharges the auxiliary battery will have enough power to keep these co components in the running condition here in the schematic diagram you can see the difference between the ic engine auxiliaries and the electric vehicle auxiliaries towards the left side we are seeing the ic engine auxiliaries towards the right side we are seeing the electric vehicle auxiliaries in the case of the ic engine you can see that there are number of components the electric vehicle uses the components for spos is the contractor now the working of the contractor is to connect the auxiliary battery with the components and when the contractor gives the signal only at that time battery will supply the power right otherwise in the number of components the wasted power will be supplied throughout the driving of the vehicle and that will be stopped by the contractor and it will select when to supply the power to which component air conditioner that we have discussed audio system that will be connected to the dashboard driving control will be given with the auxiliary battery as well elect uh, ems that is energy management system the horn will be worked as an auxiliary system the instruments which are different dashboard instruments the lamps that is headlamp tail lamp side lamp all the things are an auxiliary system the power steering power windows and the window defroster are also a types of the auxiliary power system as well and windshield wipers is connected as an auxiliary system as well window defroster will be done with the help of a normal air conditioning system as well when the air conditioning is kept in the running it will work as the defroster as well it will not let the uh, windows to be frosted and the view of the driver will be clear with the help of the our air conditioning system so these are the basic auxiliary power supplies for our electric vehicle next is our regenerative braking system now the uh, main function or the main principle of the regenerative braking system is to use the kinetic energy of the vehicle when the vehicle is being decelerated or when the vehicle is cruising at the higher speed on the highways or when the vehicle is taken at the stop by braking that kinetic energy will be used to charge the battery what happens in the regenerative braking is that at the start of our normal braking some amount of the power is used to charge the battery by converting the kinetic energy into the chemical energy that thing can be obtained by the help of regenerative braking what happens is that when we apply the brake our motor will start working as a generator so the rotations of the wheels will be transmitted from the generator towards our battery for the charging after some amount of the braking the normal friction braking or we can say the hydraulic braking will activate and at that time the complete braking will be obtained so almost 15 to 20% of the braking power or the kinetic energy can be converted into the uh, charging of the battery you can see here the graph which shows that up to a certain amount regenerative braking is done and after that amount the hydraulic braking or our normal braking which have been given is applied for the proper braking effort this is a normal regenerative braking diagram for the electric vehicle in that you can see the components for our vehicle the battery is connected with our regenerative control system which gives us the power the motor the motor control the brake control and the abs control is provided the hydraulic booster is provided for the braking of the vehicle in the case of the braking system the hydraulic pump will have to be operated from the help of our electric vehicle batteries so what happens is that when a driver applies the brake force on the brake pedal at the start the braking will be applied from the regenerative system after the maximum value of regeneration is achieved the 
actual hydraulic braking is applied up to the requirement of the braking. If the vehicle needs to be kept at the stop condition, in that the maximum force will be applied on the brake and the maximum regenerative plus hydraulic braking will be applied on the vehicle and this is simply how we get the force that is required to stop our vehicle. When the vehicle in the stop condition at that time the kinetic energy will be zero. So after that the regeneration will not be possible. This is simply the graph which shows the pedal force and the torque relation that is braking torque relation. So up to a grey part that you can see below is up the area for the regenerative braking of the driving wheels. Above that the hydraulic braking on the driving wheels and above that the hydraulic braking that is required on the non-driving wheels which are the wheels that is being taking the power from the driving wheels. So this is how step wise the braking work and that force or that brake force will be distributed by the help of the sensors or we can say the electronic brake force distribution system that we even use in the IC engine as well. So this is how simply the regenerative braking system works in the electric vehicle and almost all the electric vehicle uses a regenerative braking. So this was all about the auxiliary systems or the auxiliary components of the electric vehicle. In the next lecture we will start a new chapter. Until then, thank you so much.